So the first one is, there's this young boy in Mexico, right, in the 20s. So 1920s, so not that far, long, not that far um, back. And in the 20s in Mexico, if you know this, it was illegal. They started a war kind of against Christianity. So a new government came in, and he was cracking down. He was getting rid of Christianity, right? So the government came in, and they were taking all the churches. They were rounding up priests and nuns, right? And either exiling them or executing them. And basically, they made it the outlawed Christianity in Mexico in the 20s, right? So this is not that far long ago. So what did the people do? A lot of the people got together and they started to rebel, right? They started to fight. They started to fight for their faith, right? It started out as simple protest. It started out as kind of the everyday, hey, no, this is our faith. We want this. We have this right. But then it escalated. It escalated to a full-blown war. So it's called the, Christ, uh, the Cristero Wars, right? And you can go back and you can read about this. But there's one particular boy during this time who grew up, and he was only about 13 or 14 when all of this started, right? And all of his older brothers were off and being, they were being soldiers, and at 14, he was begging his mom, mom, let me go fight. Let me go fight for our faith. Why? Because he knew who he was. He knew what he loved. And he knew, right, that he was loved by God. But he knew that he wanted to defend the God who loved him first. Right? That's what this is about. Those are the little movements that we have in our heart. That's what changes from when we just know and we want to worship God versus putting in perspective that, oh, no, this is the God who made me. This is the God who loves me. Right? He loved me first, so everything is going to be okay. And so this saint's name, Saint uh, Jose Sanchez del Rio, at 14 was begging his mom, please let me go fight. Let me go fight in this war. And everyone was telling him, no, you're just a kid. Like, it's too dangerous. But finally, he convinced me, he said, fine, I won't go fight. I won't be a soldier, but let me at least carry the flag. And he said, okay, well, fine. You can carry the flag. You won't carry a weapon. And you'll just go into the battles, right? And you'll be there, but then you have to leave. So he said, this is what I want, right? And in fact, when he was arguing back and forth with, with his mom and his brother, he said, don't deprive me of this opportunity to be a saint, right? Don't deprive me of this opportunity to defend the God who loves us. So he flashed forward and all these wars are going on. And one day, Jose Sanchez del Rio goes into battle, right? Carrying the flag. Well, everything goes wrong, right? And they start losing this particular battle, right? And the government soldiers are coming in and they're killing everyone. And the soldier next to him's horse dies. So Jose Sanchez del Rio gets off his horse, gives it to this other soldier and says, go, go live to fight another day. Go, I'll stay here and hide. So he leaves himself in danger. And then the other soldier escapes. And then it's just him. And he hides for a little bit, but then the, the, the other soldiers come and they find him. And they capture him. And then they torture him. And they say, give up your faith. You're just a child. Go home. Renounce your faith. Forget about this silly war and just go home and just be normal. Go be a normal kid. What do you think he did? He said no, right? Why? Because he knew what he was made for, right? He didn't know it looked that way. He didn't know that he was going to be standing in front of people who wanted to kill him for his faith. But what he did know was that he was made by God. And that God loved him first. And he was so confident in that, that he was able to stand there and say, no, why would I abandon this God? Why would I give up this Christ? And he says, no. And over months of time, they go and they keep torturing him. They say, just renounce your faith and you won't do it. So then what happens after a while and they start to realize that he's not going to break, they try one last effort. And what they end up doing, right, and he's captured... And at this whole time, he's been having to dig the graves of all those soldiers who are killing who wouldn't renounce their faith either. And finally, what they did is they cut up his feet and made him walk through the town all the way to the cemetery to a grave he had dug the whole way, basically saying, please renounce your faith. You're just a boy. We want to let you go. Just renounce the faith. And he wouldn't do it. And he got all the way to the point where he was standing over the grave. And they said to him one last time, just say that Christ the King is dead. They say, Christ is dead. They say, give up your faith. They give him one last chance. And what do you think he did? He said, no. He looked at them and he said, vivo Cristo Rey. Long live Christ the King. And they execute him there. And that was it. That's a saint, right? Those are the people we think of when we think of saints and holiness. But what made him a saint? Sure, it was his heroic death, right? He was a martyr. 
And that gives him a place of honor, right? Because we look at him and we're like, he got it. But what did he really get? What drove him to that point? It was love, right? He knew that God loved him first, right? He knew who he was. He knew what he was called to. And again, he didn't know what it would look like down the line. He didn't know where his life was going. But all those years before that, all those years before a 14-year-old kid was standing on a battlefield, what he did know is this. He knew the cross. He knew Christ loved him, right? He had an incredible Catholic upbringing, and he knew those things. And he was confident in them. And it led him to be able to say, whatever happens, I know things are good because I know who I am. I know that I was created by God and God loves me. Guys, that's the confidence that we get with this. Because not even death, right? That's the whole point of the cross. Is this is Jesus saying, not even death can take away the love that I have for you. And again, this is what we're called to. But even more than that, it's what we are all made for. That's the beauty of it.